In this brief lecture, I will give you an introduction to animations on iOS. Animations are an essential part of mobile applications, and they create a great user experience. They make our apps feel alive and interesting. Animations on iOS are fairly simple to implement. Let's take a look at the basics. A basic animation is just a property of a view that is changed over time. UI views provide multiple of these animatable properties. These include the color, the alpha value, and the transform of the view. The transform actually allows us to scale the view, to skew it, or rotate it. And we'll see some examples throughout the next slides and in the demo app. Let's take a look at how we can build a really simple animation in iOS. This here is the code. And you can see that we start with a call to UI view animate with duration. This here is the simplest possible call to create an animation. This function takes a callback block. And inside of that callback block, we provide the properties that shall be animated. In this example here, the view had an alpha value of 1 and a red color before we went into the animation block. Then we called animate with duration and passed the duration of 1 second. Inside of the block, we changed the values to the target values. Now, iOS will create an animation from the original values to the target values that lasts for one second. And it will create a linear transformation between these two values. If you read up more on animations, you will see that it is possible to have nonlinear translations between different states. But for now, we're going to focus on the simple case. This means this view here will spend one second going from fully visible to half opaque and the background color will change from red to blue. So the simplest way of creating an animation is using exactly this block here and placing the changes that you want to be animated inside of the block. However, sometimes we want to go a little further, and we don't want to change simple properties such as the color or the alpha value. Let's take a look at how we can change the transform of a view. Here's an example of animating the transform of a view. You can see that the surrounding block is exactly the same as in the previous example. We animate the block with one second. Inside of the block, we now have a different change. We're no longer changing alpha or the background color, but we're actually assigning a new value to the transform property of the view. The transform property allows us to assign different transforms, like in this example, a scale factor. The scale factor consists of an x and a y scale factor. So with this animation, we are scaling the square view by factor 3, and we're doing that over one second. You can take a look at different types of transforms and use them whenever you want to rotate, scale, or skew a view. Now, another type of animations that is entirely different are constraint-based animations. Typically, in most of our iOS apps, we use auto layout constraints to design the position and the size of a view. So if you want to build animations that work nicely together with these constraints, we can do that using code. The process for animating constraints is slightly different than the process for other types of animations. Here you can see a short example. We have a reference to a width constraint. That is a constraint that we created in Storyboard, and that we have referenced through a code connection to the source code file. Now, what we want to do is we want to animate this width constraint. Initially, it has a width of 700, and we want to change it to 400. Here's how I can do this. We change the constant of that width constraint to 400, which is the target value. Now, auto layout doesn't automatically update this view right away. It does that within the next auto layout cycle. And if we want this change to be animated instead of instant, then we can trigger this auto layout cycle within an animation block. We accomplish that with a call to layout if needed. This will trigger an auto layout cycle that will be animated with the duration of one second. That will cause the view to shrink from a width of 700 to a width of 400. Animating between two different layouts expressed by two different sets of constraints is really powerful. This here is a very simple example where we're only modifying one constraint. But we can expand this example to a more general case. Imagine you want to change the shape and position of a view by modifying its constraints with an animation. You can do that using the following trick. We set up two different sets of constraints. The first set of constraints, in this case called initial constraints, 
contains all of the constraints that define the initial position and size of the view. Then you have a totally separate second set of constraints, in this example called final constraints, that define the target size and the target position of the view. When you build the animation, you first deactivate all of the old ones, then you activate all of the new constraints, and then within an animation block, you call layout if needed. This will trigger the next auto layout cycle to run with an animation, and it will animate from the initial state to the second state. Let's take a look at this in an example. Here's an animation from a blue square from an initial state you can see now to a different target state. Using the approach that you just saw, you can animate between any two sets of layout constraints, which is an extremely powerful tool. So come back to this example and use it in your own app. Now let's take finally a look at a more advanced example that involves the animations that we have seen so far, but also the physics engine called UIKit Dynamics that is built into iOS. Here's a little demo from the demo application. We can expand the account details and we use regular animations for that. Then we have a bouncy animation to present a pop-up and we allow the user to drag this pop-up and to throw it off the screen. Now this is really an advanced topic, but it can add a lot of polish to your app to have such interactive elements that behave like physics bodies. And luckily UIK Dynamics makes this fairly straightforward. We have an example of exactly this view inside of the demo project, so I encourage you to download it and take a look at the code.